Mid Journey version 6 has been out for a while now and I've been using it quite extensively for the last few months and I just want to share my experience and also some of the favorite commands I've been using uh, to try and get more of a consistency with my images. So I've got Midjourney open here and I'm on a pro plan with Midjourney. It's $60 a month uh, or $570 for the year and it gives you 30 hours of fast GPU time. So in reality, I think the standard plan is more than enough if you're just doing web design work. I'm not getting anywhere close to the 30 hours per month GPU usage. Um, I'm probably using around eight or nine at the moment, just from generating a few different variations uh, of images. And the reason why I recommend the standard plan over the basic uh, is because you get unlimited relaxed GPU time as well. So if you do run out of the fast GPU time, you can still continue using it, but it will just be a little bit slower when it's generating the images. And the only reason why I've upgraded to Pro Plan here is because of stealth mode. You know, some of the images I'm creating for clients, they don't really want it to be out for everyone to see. So the stealth mode is necessary for what I'm working on. But if that's not a concern to you, then obviously go with the standard plan. So I just want to go over some of the settings and the commands I've been using to get more consistent imagery for my work. So for settings, obviously you want to go with the default mode, which is V6. For stylized, I prefer going mid. I do try and play around with it sometimes, depending on the outcome of the image quality. So just to show you the difference between a stylized low and a stylized very high, I'm just going to ask Mid Journey to create an image of a cat in the living room. And then I'll do the same in stylized very high as well. If I put them side by side on the screen here, you can see the difference in uh, quality and also in the amount of content that's been generated. So for that reason, I've been sticking to stylized medium just because obviously I want that realistic look in my images. But I don't want Mid Journey to generate so much content in the image that it looks unrealistic. And now if I ask it to generate the same prompt of a cat in a living room, uh, you can see that it's balanced the uh, visual style of the image quite well between the low and the very high and the outcome is a lot more realistic. Next I've got the public mode turned off. Now obviously that's only available in the pro plan so if you don't have that then you can't turn that off. Uh, and then the next thing is uh, remix mode. I think for everybody this should be on by default. Remix mode basically gives you the ability to add prompt uh, for any images that you want to create a variation of. And let's say I want to do a variant of version two. So what you'll notice is a model of the original prompt uh, has come up and I actually noticed I made a mistake uh, in the typo here, but it doesn't really matter. But here I can basically change it. So I can say a cat in a kitchen. But what I'll do is it will try and reimagine it in a very similar style in the original image. It's very similar to the second image from the cat in a living room. It's still got a lamp in the background. The cat is still in a similar position. It's basically just replaced the background from a living room to a kitchen. So to me, having remix mode enabled, I would say is a must for uh, anyone using mid journey. And then to the right of remix mode, we've got high variation mode and low variation mode. Personally, I prefer low variation mode because it stays true to the original image that you're asking it to create a variation to. So again, if I was to change it to high variation mode and ask it to generate a variation of version two, and I say a cat in a kitchen, you see how the image doesn't really follow the original image anymore. And it's kind of creating a variation that differs quite significantly to the original image. And then below we've got the turbo mode, fast mode and relax mode. So if you've got a plan with mid journey, then obviously you can stick to fast mode. If you want to generate images a bit quicker, then you can use turbo mode. I don't notice that big of a difference between the two of them, but if you don't want to use up your GPU minutes, then you can use relax mode. And um, for sticky style, you can ignore that for the time being because that's more related to tune command, which is only applicable to version 5.2 and we're using version 6. So uh, we can ignore that for the time being. Uh, and then lastly, we've got raw mode on the top left corner. Raw mode basically removes the biasness of uh, mid journey. So mid journey inherently has its own artistic style. And if you turn on raw mode, it'll basically remove that and produce somewhat of a more natural look. That isn't always the case because Mid Journey has become very smart now in its image generation. So to me, it's more of a trial and error to see what you prefer, whether you think the raw mode is better or not. 
Okay, so let's start um, getting some consistency with our workflow. So before I create any images, what I'll do is I'll set some uh, preferred options. So let's go into prefer option set. This is where I like to start setting some main colors that my clients uh, want to use for their images. So let's come up with a brand name. So let's say it's uh, Myth Quest. Okay. And then if you press the right arrow, uh, what you'll get next is the value. So here you can say Myth Quest is a is an electric car company and their main brand colors are the mid journey right now can't actually accept hex code but what we can do instead is if you've got the hex code available you can actually paste it into color name uh, and then it'll provide a color output and you can then use that to feed into mid journey so let's say this green color is what we've got for our brand you can paste the color in here and then when you click on the magnifying glass it'll give you the color which in this case is pistachio we'll tell mid journey that so and the main brand colors are pistachio and then you press enter so now you've basically created a custom option uh, for mid journey and every time you type in MythQuest, it will remember the prompts that you've given it so if i say imagine stationary set for dash dash myth quest so you can see that it's basically created uh, images based on the custom option you've given it so this is especially useful when you're creating marketing images uh, for customers and you can expand on that as well so you can say so you can say a new car promotional hero banner for dash dash myth quest and again, it's created a set of images based on the parameters that you've defined uh, for MythQuest. Uh, let's say I've really liked uh, image one. Um, so what I can do is I can copy link, go back into prefer option set and type in MythQuest and then go back into value. What you can do is actually paste the link of the image into the value, put in the prompts again. It will now make sure it always reference this specific image and also the prompt that you've given it. Now, hopefully if I say a car hero banner for dash dash myth quest. So you can see what mid journey's done is reference as much as possible of the image that you've provided it and also the command. So it's definitely a green car and it also definitely looks like the initial vehicle that you gave it as a reference photo. Okay, so the next thing that I quite like is the uh, prefer suffix. So if I do slash prefer suffix, so what it does is, is basically adds a prompt to the end of each of the command that you're using. Personally, I want all my images to be 16 by 9 uh, because that fits a hero banner a little bit better. So if I do slash slash AR, uh, 16 by 9 um, and then press enter so you'll see that it says suffix is now AR 16 by 9 and then if I do imagine promotional image for dash dash myth quest and press enter you can see at the end of sentence is added AR 16 by 9 on my behalf so moving forward basically it will always generate images based on the 16 by 9 ratio okay so the colors are a little bit different but uh, I don't really mind that, but I quite like the third image here. So that's one, two, three. So I'll say upscale three. So yeah, I quite like the details that's created on there. So I can say zoom out, two X. Okay, so I quite like the second image here. So I'll say upscale number two. And then obviously for any hero banner images, you want a little bit of text on either side. And for this one, I want it on the left-hand side and uh, what I want now is to basically ask Mid Journey to move the camera to the left slightly. The, what the arrows here represent is the direction of the camera, not the object. So if you want to put some text on the left hand side in your own design and you want the object to move to the right, what you actually want to click on is the left arrow because you're panning the camera to the left slightly. And then obviously the remix panel will come up. Now for this, I don't need to change anything. So I'll just say submit. And again, it'll give me some variations. So I quite like, I think they all look fairly similar to be honest. So let's just go with uh, number two. 
and I'll click on upscale. Basically what it does is it would double the resolution of the image. And we just got to wait a little bit for the image to generate because it's generating quite a large image. And if you click on open in browser, you'll see the full resolution of the image. And then we can copy the image and paste it into Figma. A new age of electric vehicle. Okay, so that's basically an example workflow of how I've been using Midjourney within my web design process. Now, obviously with Midjourney, there is still a lot of room for improvement in terms of its user experience. You know, using Discord as a platform to generate images is not exactly ideal, but I do believe they are working on an online platform, which I think you need to have submitted about 10,000 images to Midjourney before you get access to it um, for now. So hopefully the web application uh, gets launched soon and yeah I can't wait to see what AI can offer in the future uh, to simplify our workflow even more and if you want to learn about how I set up my own design consultancy you can click on this video here otherwise thanks for watching and see you later